Hello, uh, this is your farmer and friend, Malida Delungu. Today I'm at the Natural Resource Development Center College, NRDC in short. I want to bring you some uh, opinions of those that are learned so that we can dive into farming business with information. You don't want to delve into farming business without information. I'm just outside the college. Uh, I want to go inside and get some opinion for you so that at least you are informed as you go into a farming business or agriculture business. So uh, let's get in there and see what we can gather together. You know when you are doing farming, you need to ask yourself certain questions to say what do I need to gather as tools to go and make me successful. Since it is a business, it can make a loss. It can also make a profit for you. We want you to get the information that will help you to be successful in business. The NRDC is one of our leading colleges when it comes to agriculture business or farming business. So let's go inside and get some opinions about farming as we plan to delve into farming business. We're going into the college now, so this is the get. That's where I was. This is where you learn, you get your diploma from, and uh, you get into your farming business with all the knowledge that you need. This is a boom get. So travel with me, journey with me, let's go inside and enjoy the lesson. They are preparing the fields, they are watering the fields, <laughs> this is where they are going to be planting some crops, NRDC. This is a department where they do their cashew nuts and you have the greenhouse there, you have some cabbages in there, some tomatoes in there. Uh, NRDC, NRDC, yes, one of our leading agriculture colleges. So we're still going inside. Let's keep going so that at least we can get some opinions from the learned people, opinions about agriculture, about farming, and man, this business this thriving business, the gut business. Yes, you know, in life, one needs to have ideas, one needs to have tools, one needs to have a dream, one needs to develop a passion, and you cannot do that without going to meet the experts. The experts will guide you, the experts will help you develop a balanced view about uh, uh, the business you are getting into. And for us, it is farming for us it is agriculture and this uh, is a place where you learn animal husbandry you learn crop management or hot culture and uh, we just want to have some opinions of these people great people yeah it is what it is so since our interest is really uh, animal husbandry. Uh, let's go to the animal section where we may be able to get some information. So this is a site where they keep their cows and their goats and their, and their poultry. So here we go. We're just entering that section where we need to get our opinion. I'm excited about getting some opinion this side about farming. I hope you are also excited. I'd like you to subscribe to my channel, CLT Farm, and uh, not only subscribe but also make some comments. Make some comments. Let's interact and share. 
Yeah, so share the video. You are free to share the video. Let's share the video. Make some comments, share the video, subscribe. Yes, looking forward to wonderful interaction session with you guys. Yes, so this is the animal session where we we get to learn about cows and uh, the small ruminants, the sheep and goats, and also the poultry section. They are all mixed. This is beautiful. So we also have pigs here. And babies just relaxing. So there the ship goes, the dopa and bucket. This is a summary of the opinion of a, of a Leonard. So I've been told that a lot of people do take uh, goats and sheep as hardy animals and they leave them to manage themselves. But then I'm told it is not supposed to be that like that because these animals need human input. They need human input. You need to protect them from predators. You need to control the diseases at your farm. And, uh, and uh, of course, certain diseases that uh, were mentioned like the mange, the parasites like worms and of course the bacteria well, you need to vaccinate uh, the animals so that they are protected from bacteria because sometimes these uh, bacteria outbreaks are able to wipe your flock uh, away and sometimes also the mange is able to wipe your flock so it is important that you put up certain uh, parameters, security systems, and certain management systems, uh, certain inputs to control these animals. You need to have systems uh, of vaccination. You need to also make sure that the place where they are is clean. You need to also know how to handle them quickly when uh, you see anything that is looking suspicious don't just leave them to manage themselves and uh, just to be roaming and grazing out there make sure that you are bringing some human input you are helping create a certain condition that will be able to promote productivity and good health for the animals i've been told that the goats and the sheep as they are the easiest when it comes to uh, farming uh, uh, animal husbandry when it comes to livestock they are the easiest because they produce fast and you are able to increase your wealth quickly in a short period of time and so you need to put in your effort you need to 
uh, put in systems that are going to help you to manage your animals. You take care of your animals, the animals will take care of you. Make sure that you are helping them to fight those diseases and parasites. Uh, make sure that you are giving them enough water, enough space uh, to roam around, clean environment so that they are able to do well for you and you'll be able to make a profit from those animals. Good management is key to having a, a success in the farm business, in the agriculture business. So it is important that you learn from the learned and that's the opinion that we got from NRDC. I hope to come back and get some uh, official statement today the authorities were in meetings so I didn't get their official uh, statements uh, I couldn't go and uh, record them next time we do a recording a, a deeper recording than this one uh, because we'll get official statement this is the University of Zambia. I've come to get opinion from the learned people at the University of Zambia. I'm just entering. This is not their main entrance, but it's closer to the veterinary department where I'm going. So here we go to get some more opinion about farming. So come with me. Let's go and ask what we can learn about farming before we delve into farming. Yeah, let's go get some information. You know, for you to balance your passion, your dream, your ideas, um, well, you need to get information. Information from those who are learned. So let's go to the leading university in the nation, the University of Zambia, and get information. Let's go get information. The University of Zambia. This is where I brought my uh, blood samples. I took some blood samples for some guts to come and check if the animals are okay. Yeah, check for parasites, check for viruses, check for bacteria. I brought the blood samples here and uh, the samples say they were okay, they were fine. So this is the University of Zambia. I'm now heading to the vet department, the veterinary department. So just to ask somebody from there what is their opinion for those who want to start goat farming or do farming in general. We want to gather certain information. If we can be given some principles that will help us, that will be very good. So that's their chapel there. That's where they, they do services. And that's where they marry people. That's where they bring funerals and other important um, public services. So that is the University of Zambia. That there is the Confucius building done by the Chinese. Yeah, let me take you to the veterinary department so that we'll be able to gather information. The University at the University of Zambia at the University of Zambia. Yeah, I'm back with on this journey with me to gather information. So this is where we find the School of Agriculture, the School of Veterinary, also called Amora um, Machel, the School of Agricultural Science and the School of Veterinary Services, Veterinary Medicine. So let's see what the authorities have to say about agriculture, about farming, agribusiness. So here we go. Let's gather information. Let's gather knowledge. 
let's delve into farming business with knowledge let's lay a proper foundation we want to lay a proper foundation the foundation must be solid must be good so let's go get the information that will help us lay a proper foundation laying a proper foundation Africa Center of Excellence of Infectious Diseases of Humans and Animals. Nice building that they are making up there. Okay, but that's not where we are going. We're going inside here to go and gather information, to gather knowledge. Come with me. Let's see what we can get. Something that will be helpful for us. Let's go do one or two things. I am in the office of Dr. Mwanga. Uh, he is uh, one of uh, the doctors at the University of Zambia and is, in, is doing AI, artificial insemination, but he's also a farmer. He got some uh, beautiful savannas and uh, he may be able to give us just some opinion uh, about goat farming or just farming business in general. It is very important that we get uh, opinions from the learned. So I'll, I'll ask uh, Dr. Mwanga to just share some few things um, with us. Just hold on. So this is Dr. Mwanga. We are in his office. And I want to just ask him some few questions about goat farming. Um, last time I saw him, he was telling me that he got some beautiful savannas. Dr. Mwanga, how are your savannas doing? Yeah, um, they're doing well. Uh, I think I can't complain. Um, though they're not so mean as you are putting it. <laughs> yeah, but we, we are getting there. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mwanga, the purpose of this visit is to just uh, get some opinions from you, how we can lay the foundation. What uh, are your thoughts about somebody who wants to delve into uh, farming as a business, uh, but also in particular goat farming? What would you encourage them to uh, do as a foundation for for their farming business. Okay, as I remember what I said, that um, uh, this is a, an abrupt discussion, eh? Yes. <laughs> yes, but um, I think first things first, when you want to um, to go into farming, the first thing you need to ask yourself, why are you getting there? Why are you, if you say you want to do good farming, why do you want to, go, to do good farming? You should have. Um, your own objective. Eh? You should yes. know why you want to do that. Why didn't Why didn't you go for beef? Or why didn't you go for let's say sheep farming? Or is it poultry? So you decide because you you know what you want to attain at the end of the day. Yeah. So it's up to that individual. What is the purpose of that? Uh, farming venture or farming business. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, uh, goat farming, you see, goats are very hardy animal, huh? animals. Yes. I call them hardy because um, they, they don't force things easily. Mm -hmm. They stay dairy or some other even pigs. Uh, they are quite resistant to diseases. So I think um, that's one reason why one would choose goat uh, as, um, as a farming venture. But the other thing also you need to look at is uh, we call the generational interval. Yeah? If you, you want to go into big farming, for example, you have to wait for at least, yeah? if it's a cow, uh, maybe 24 months or even sometimes three years for it to give you the first cow. Right? But goats, you know, they go into production early and usually, you know, the, the duration of their pregnancy is just about 152 days. So in a year, you, you may have maybe double 
um, the Lamb of God, maybe let's say a, 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 a female God can give birth twice in a year, if you like, the same as sheep. So you you look at how many times you are going to have the offspring in a given period of time, and mm-hmm. right where you need to wait for a longer period of time. And they are easy to manage yeah, in terms of managing it. They are browsers, eh? they can survive even in harsh, harsh, harsh conditions as long as they are free shrubs and whatever. I like the, the dairy for example, you need to supplement a lot. Eh? And same with beef in terms of, um, um, you can see the climate, eh? there are issues with climate now, uh, climate change is real. So if you want to have animal species that can survive, in harsh conditions, I think the goat is the right animal to do that. Thank you for that information, Dr. Mwanga. But when it comes to also it being a business, um, would you say it is a lucrative business that somebody should uh, get into? Would uh, one uh, be able to become wealthy uh, if they went into goat farming? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm also studying uh, in terms of goat uh, farming. Uh, but you asked me a question, why is this? Why are you starting? Why are you trying to get into God? Um, every time you, you sit by the, the Great North Road, yeah, you see the number of trucks maybe in the evening carrying goats going where? To customer, for example. Yeah? Um, if there was no business for such animals, those trucks wouldn't have been going those long distances just to take those animals and and uh, and and that same animal actually is easier when you look at gender it's easily uh, managed by women also so business wise yes and i think there is a market for what's everywhere um i always i always say this uh, when i meet someone in um, to that, you say they export six million, uh, or six to seven million goats every year to Middle East mm. because there's a demand for that. Um, mm. same with sheep, they say they export about five million annually. So, to me, there's demand for that. So, locally, I think we it's only that our society haven't really promoted the, the consumption of goat. Yeah, if you go and butchers. Many people go and find um, beef. Uh, the goat meat is very really fun. Maybe it's going to Kasumbale, eh? that's why mm-hmm. you don't find but it's uh, affordable and I think healthy uh, source of protein. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, what else would you say is needed at uh, somebody somebody's farm that is just beginning? Mm. Um, uh, of course, you need that. You need space, eh? and you know, gods are troublesome animals, eh? uh, especially with neighbors. So you, you must make sure that you you don't go in conflict with neighbors because they cross boundaries. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have uh, sufficient guard, whatever you call them, the wires, the fencing, so that you don't uh, disturb others who may have a different line of uh, business. Yeah? But, of course, to, to have a successful good business, you also need to be ready to consult professionals yeah? uh, mm-hmm. where need be. Yeah, because, of course, we, we are saying they're hardy animals, they rarely fall sick, but you need to, to protect them. There are certain scheduled vaccinations which you need to give, especially if you are supplementing with uh, with, uh, with grain and other things. So you need to consult with the patients, the vets, the animal scientists, so that they give you a proper guidance in terms of uh, what type of vaccines you need. If you are supplementing, what type of supplements you give, uh, what you shouldn't give. Yeah? The sheep will tell you, no, don't give this particular uh, supplement because it contains ABC. So you need to really know um, 
the nature of the animal and what is required at one particular time. Thank you, Doctor. I value your opinion. It is very helpful, and uh, we'll keep uh, asking you. Um, next time, we'll come and do a lengthy video with you, and maybe visit your farm if you allow us. So that we can see your animals, your beautiful savannas. I don't know if uh, the locals that you were planning to bring in are already in. Uh, Last time you said you wanted to bring in the local animals. Yeah, thank you for the surprise visit. <laughs> yes, the locals, I brought a few locals. Yes, uh, one gave birth, but no, no, no. Yeah, they were kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Congratulations you. on uh, your new babies. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm saying bye bye to Unza now. I'm on my way to livestock services. Uh, so let's go and get some opinions from people from the livestock. That's where I get my animal feed. That's where I get medicines. That's a leading uh, livestock services that we have here in Zambia. People come from everywhere to come and get whatever they need. So let's go there and see what we can get there. So bye bye to Umza now. Let's go to Life Dog Services. I'm passing through East Park Mall. Looks like the Valentine fever. Out on livestock services. Now that we have gone into exotic goats, um, I come to see him uh, just to give me give me opinions on what I need to do and how I need to go about my business, my farming business. And I've learned a lot. I've been into his workshop and I've benefited a lot. I just want him to give his opinion on what one needs to do to lay a good foundation in the farming business or God farming in particular. Um, so let's listen to what the doctor has to say and learn one or two things from him. Okay, so uh, good evening uh, viewers and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, edition of uh, of uh, uh, just you know some information on um, on livestock uh, production. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Augustine Kata. I'm a well-rounded uh, uh, veterinarian uh, with um, over I would say close to a decade now of uh, professional uh, experience. 
Uh, so today, for this uh, <coughs> particular uh, instance, we are going to just talk a little bit in brief uh, about uh, you know some of the things that you need to uh, to know as a farmer before you actually engage in uh, a small ruminant production, which is um, uh, keeping of uh, uh, sheep and, and, and goats. Okay, uh, what is important, I think, as a farmer. Uh, before you even engage uh, uh, in this uh, business of small ruminant production, which is uh, sheep and goats, uh, is actually uh, just you know basic information. <coughs> you need to have the basic information. Okay, you need to know uh, what is you know how a sick uh, 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 animal looks like. Okay. You need to, uh, to to have an understanding of uh, let's say the housing. Okay, you need to have an understanding of uh, how much water uh, uh, these animals need to take per day. How much of feed? Okay. So just to put things into uh, perspective. Okay, uh, I've learned, you know, in my experience uh, as a veterinarian that uh, you know. For you to be successful in uh, sheep and uh, uh, goat production, okay, you need to take you know the issue of uh, genetic selection uh, very very uh, seriously. Okay, um, it is actually a well-known fact that okay um, about 50 percent of uh, the success rate in sheep and goats production, or indeed any other livestock production that you can think of. Okay, is actually uh, dependent on your genetic selection. Okay, so if you get it wrong from your genetic selection, especially of your breeder uh, stock, then <coughs> you've already, you know, lost a uh, 50% chance of you succeeding in your uh, livestock production of sheep and goats. Okay, then the other 25% uh, is. Uh, uh, <coughs> Is actually uh, dependent on your nutrition. Okay, so that means uh, the the pasture. Okay, the hay. Okay, the uh, the supplements. Okay, and water inclusive. Okay, and just uh, to talk a little bit more about water. Okay, you will realize that, uh, uh, especially here in Zambia. We have three, you know, different uh, seasons. Okay, we have the rain season, we have the the hot season, and we also have, you know, the dry uh, season. So, as a farmer, one who wants to engage in sheep and goat production, you need to, um, to 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 think of how your animals are going to transition. Okay, from the uh, dry. Uh, a season into the rain season. Sometimes you tend to have you know prolonged you know dry uh, season. So you need to think of your animals because these are times when uh, you don't have enough you know grass in the natural grazing uh, lands. Okay, and even if uh, sometimes you have. Uh, grass, you find that it's casey, and uh, this grass that is available in this uh, <coughs> grazing land, you find that it's actually deficient of uh, uh, a lot of uh, nutritional uh, ingredients. Okay, so you need to to think of how are you going to transition during these you know dry uh, periods. Okay, so it's important for you to think of to start you know investing. In, uh, uh, in, in in irrigation, okay, growing of uh, pasture grass, okay. Uh, I think by now we need to begin to shift in terms of our mindset, okay. We are so much dependent on the rains, okay. But time and again, okay, nature has actually taught us that. Uh, we can not uh, be farmers that are absolutely dependent on the rains, okay? Because we've seen even now that okay, we 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 don't have rains actually. 
okay we've gone for weeks we've gone for days without rains okay and how are we going to survive even as human beings how are we going to survive how are our animals going to survive so we must begin to think of you know planting what we call pasture grass okay uh, and then we begin to um, harvest you know ground water okay and use it to irrigate okay to water this pasture grass so that during you know uh, the, 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 the dry season or the hot season our animals have enough pasture to actually uh, survive and then transition smoothly into the uh, the next uh, rain season okay then the other aspect that you need to seriously consider as you know uh, <clears throat> as a farmer or a first time farmer who wants to go into uh, livestock uh, production sheep and goats is uh, which actually uh, where the, the other remaining 25 percent i've talked about the 50 percent i've talked about the 25 50 percent which is genetic selection 25 percent uh, which is on your nutrition and then remaining 25% okay so making it 100% now uh, is actually your management okay how you manage uh, these animals okay management encompasses a lot of things okay your housing how you build your housing structure okay you need to ensure that you plan it in such a way that um, the platform where these uh, animals uh, sleeping okay is raised from the earth okay and also it must have what we call slits or spaces okay to allow the urine and the fecal matter to trickle down so that they are not sleeping on the same floor where you know which is made which is messed up with urine and feces because that can actually be a ground that uh, encourages you know uh, proliferation of uh, disease causing uh, agents okay but also we know that uh, urine has <coughs> ammonia which can actually choke their respiratory system and predispose them to respiratory infection and uh, these you know infections can also uh, become uh, systemic and overwhelm these animals okay causing um, a lot of stress and uh, poor uh, performance uh, in these animals okay so uh, that's just one aspect that you are considering there as far as you know uh, housing is concerned but there are so many other things okay you need to look at ventilation you need to look at you know the the roofing okay it must be um, um, uh, watertight okay from the rains uh, you need to look at the, 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 the winds the storm okay so these animals are supposed to be well protected from adverse weather conditions but also uh, you want to ensure that you you have enough space okay so that there's no competition okay you need to have uh, a house that is well compartmentalized in terms of where the pregnant you know animals are going to be um, uh, uh, staying where the the young animals are going to be staying okay where the breeding stock are going to be staying so there are just a lot of factors that you need to consider apart from just the height uh, the, the other thing which is hygiene okay in this uh, environment premises that you're keeping your animals you see uh, people do not want to, uh, uh, to, to to sweep you know the floors where these animals are, sleep, uh, are sleeping but I just want to tell you and uh, this uh, will actually help in terms of you know managing stress uh, in your in your in your in your in your, in your, in your your business if you are going to ensure that every day you actually sweep where these animals are sleeping a clean environment means uh, an environment that is free from disease causing agents so it is a must that every day you sweep the environment okay apart from that even just your workers I've talked about basic information not only you as a uh, the owner of the business or the manager but you need to ensure that the vision that you have you sell it even to your workers okay and you also need uh, to ensure that they buy into your vision okay uh, but also it is important that you provide your workers with decent accommodation 
okay because if i come to your farm for instance and i look at uh the structure where the, your animals are staying okay and if i find that it's a dilapidated structure okay you as you don't need to tell me you don't need to show me where your workers are i already know that you are not taking good care of your workers okay so it's very important that uh, you maintain good structures for your animals and for sure if you can keep you know animals in a decent structure then i already know that you are uh, capable of providing decent accommodation for your workers because your workers once you take care of them they'll be able to take care of your animals okay so today just in brief these are some of the tips that i thought i could share with you uh, <coughs> But uh, you should look out for, for more of such information and uh, just to encourage you, you know, it is information that uh, will be able to, to build us even as a nation. It is information that will be able to liberate us, okay, even, you know, from uh, poverty, okay. So we need to uh, make a deliberate decision to, uh, uh, to acquire knowledge to acquire information that's the only way we'll be able to increase you know our profit margins on our farm in our businesses okay so with these you know few tips uh once again my name is Ando Kata Augustine okay uh, allow me to uh, just end here and uh, I wish you uh, the very uh, best in your uh, endeavors okay to uh, engage in uh, a small ruminant production thank you very much so we have been able to see that if we are going to succeed in the farming endeavor in the business uh, endeavor or agriculture business endeavor we need to have a dream, we need to have a vision, we need to have the idea of what we want to do in life. If we are going to go very far, we need to develop a passion, we need to make sure that we infuse excitement, we are bringing in the joy and the energy that will help us to succeed. There must be perseverance in farming. And so we have gathered some information and we must remember that you cannot uh, go into this business, into this endeavor without uh, you having the energy, without you having the education, without you having the information. You cannot go into it uneducated, uninformed. Uh, you need to at least gather information. You need to go into it with uh, at least some mentors and some people to help you succeed. It is important that you lay a proper foundation for your farm. It's a proper a proper foundation for your business endeavor. So this is what we were doing today. I hope it has been uh, beneficial to you. Remember to subscribe, to like, and also to share the video. Let's share the information with others. I wait to hear your comments. Please do put in your comments so that we are able to learn together, to go together. Uh, maybe there are things that I've left out that you may want to add. Yes, uh, when I see your comments, I may be able to include them in my next video. Thank you very much, and God richly bless you.